Cool. So this is going to be the fun part. So I'm going to basically, let's pretend I'm a brand new rideshare company and I'm getting ready to launch. I'm getting ready to get started. Uh, what type of insurance do I need? I mean, I have a lot of people that come to me, uh, you know, with various ideas about new rideshare companies, some more legit, some more thought out than others, some more funding than others. And, uh, you know, you're actually one of the people that I refer a lot of those folks to, but I've never actually uh, sat on the other side. So I guess if you could uh, pretend that I'm uh, someone you know, in that position, starting a new rideshare company, what, what, do I, what type of insurance do I need and what should I think about? Of course. So again, I, this kind of goes back to, you know, when I, I, I told you about like Uber and Lyft first launching, the regulatory involvement wasn't as heavily uh, mandating exactly what they need to be covering as an organization. However, now, you know, each state and each city within, within the states has, has developed a pretty robust set of requirements for um, yeah. what, what to insure for your business. So let's say you have an auto sharing operation here in California. Um, typically mm -hmm. what we'll need to, do, to review is, you know, any specific requirements of your state or your, you know, the Department of Transportation. You know, you see a lot of rideshare operators yeah. partnering with, you know, say LA DOT or, you know, San Francisco DOT or Oakland DOT. A lot of times these, these, these entities will have their own contractual or permit requirements for, you know, the operators within their programs or, right. or just operating within their city. But then you also need to take a look at the larger scale and see what the state would require. Uh, a lot of time, the state states, I'd say a good rule of thumb is that most states will require three times the legal limit of liability for personal autos. So in other words, mm -hmm. you know, in California, I think the, the personal limit is 15, uh, 15, 10, 5. Um, or it's, you know, 15,000, 10,000 and, and 5,000 for medical payments, or it may be 10,000. You know, what you have there is a lot of times the state will require three times that amount to operate as a shared vehicle operator. Um, yeah. so, you know, what you want to do as you're really for first starting as an organization is, uh, is, is make sure that you're compliant with your regulatory authorities. Make sure you've got the correct got protections in place. That's sort of that state and city, you know, level, um, basically regulatory wise. Right. And, and if you're just started getting started out the door, a lot of times that'll be a great place to start, you know, but what I, I find is mm -hmm. that a lot of these firms I work with that are growing, you know, up to, you know, 300, 400, 500 vehicles or units, um, you know, a lot of times it, it starts to become a question of, is that really enough insurance? So really what you want to start to do there is to really benchmark the size of your firm, you know, maybe even procure an additional excess limit of liability to make sure that you're your, your, your company is protected. You know, it's one thing to protect your drivers and your vehicles. It's a whole nother consideration to protect your company should, you know, should the driver and, and the operator in question. So, you know, you know, whatever your business is, if that's listed on a demand letter from a lawyer, you know, a lot of times those can be thrown out, but as you know, as I'm sure a lot of your listeners are aware, defense costs can sometimes be incurred regardless of fault. And, in that type of a situation, you want to make sure that your entity is actually being provided coverage as well so you can provide a defense yeah. and, and get back to work. Yeah, and that sort of makes sense. So basically what you're saying is you sort of need that kind of, you know, look at the basic requirements of either the state, you know, CPUC, for example, in California, California Public Utilities Commission that regulates TNCs. And I know they've got a set of requirements when it comes to insurance in order to get your permit, you need to follow through with that. And then there may be additional ones at the state level, but also at the same time, that may just be a minimum and it may only, you know, it may not actually cover everything you need, but you sort of, you know, I think kind of put it in, and this is sort of why, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I like speaking with you, because you also think about the business side of things, right? If you're a brand new operator and, you know, you're kind of looking at all your costs, like the excess liability, if you, you know, sometimes there's a certain point, right, where the tipping point now you can kind of, it makes more sense to, you know, kind of go and get every single insurance that you might need. But when you're early and you're just starting, maybe you just want more of the bare minimum, because if you have to pay that excess, you could go out of business, right? <laughs> if you're a startup. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and the, candidly that, you know, when we're talking right now, I mentioned earlier, we're in a hard market. I, I, I'd say, you know, there are a lot of competitive programs out there, but competitiveness is relative. And, you know, the price a mm -hmm. lot of times for startup operators, whether you're starting with scooters, bikes, vehicles, you know, shared services, a lot of times I find that even startups in the space are, are unaware of really where the costs for these are, are really going to start. And a lot of times that can, yeah. that can inundate the budget a little bit. And of course, I'd never preach to anyone to over-insure, but, you know, we want to be smart and you know, a lot of times what my team will do is provide a, a robust spectrum of kind of, you know, over insuring, you know, adequate insurance, maybe, and then maybe kind of your cost saving um, kind of mindset um, based placement, which of course is never truthfully my recommendation, but 
again, budget is always king here, and we got to make sure that we're protecting companies while also, you know, considering the budget constraints they're up against. 